I'm pleased to sponsor the alternative interview. And so we're all on to January 2019 and you're, you, you, you do come back to order shot on yeah. loan. And I can, I can remember actually just before you came back, I can remember sitting with Gary in his, um, at the military stage. You know, I worked with the army football association. You were training where our facilities are. And I can remember I used to speak to Gary often and, you know, it was a difficult time for the club. There's no getting the right way from it. You know, things didn't happen that season the way that anybody would have anticipated and it just seemed to spiral into different areas and a lot of injuries at the start of the season that never really settled. And I can remember being with Gary and it was on a Monday morning and he was forlorn because he had three key loan signings all on the same day, all fell through. You were one of them. And then you came a couple of weeks later, I think, or a week or two later. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the reason was, the injuries, wherever you were or whatever it was. But, it, you know, he was on the fringe of getting something together that would give him a chance to get out of the relegation scrap that they were in. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed to be the way the season was going. Everything didn't happen at that time. But a couple of weeks later, you did come. The other two players didn't, unfortunately, in the end. But what was it like to go back on loan um, to a totally different club to the one that you'd left in terms of what you needed to do to, to succeed that season? Yeah, uh, it was difficult. Uh, at the time, I wasn't playing on at Lincoln again uh, Danny Cowley uh, had his and Nicky Defer they were both great un, unreal at what they do and the detail they give uh, I wasn't playing at that time and from my point everyone I was like what can I do to play but there wasn't really much I guess Bruno was on form and Harry Anderson was on form but there's not much you can do when players literally playing every game and scoring assisting goals I remember thinking look it's pretty much been nearly a year of me not getting a run of games together. Uh, a bit like when I was at Watford, I need to play games. I, was, I wasn't, I like I said, 21. I, was, I think I was 22, 23 at the time. I needed to go go play. I need to, need to play games. And uh, yeah, I think was tried to, he tried to get me back uh, early in the Jan window. But um, yeah, Lincoln had injuries at the time and they didn't want me to go in case they needed me. And uh, it was downside to that was I knew I wasn't going to play. I was just going to be on the bench as a body. So I was a bit like, oh, it's a bit frustrating, but there's not, there wasn't really much I could do about it. Then, yeah, a couple of weeks later, uh, Wads rang me again, like, oh, are like, you still up for coming? I said, yeah, but Lincoln had a game. I think it was Monday night he rang me. Uh, Lincoln had a game on a Tuesday night. It was away. No, he rang me Sunday night. That was it, Sunday night. And they had a game on... Tuesday night away and it was far I remember it was an overnight one and they just put the squad list out to see who's travelling so they put a 19 man squad out one person misses out or it was a 20 man squad one or two and um, I remember thinking I thought I was going to go like go to Aldershot back on, on loan and then uh, I rang Danny Cowley thinking like answers he didn't answer his phone once but he was trying to sort out deals to get players in so I could go if that makes sense. And um, I ended up ringing him and saying, look, I don't want to travel all that way for an over like overnight stay and not play. And he said, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. You've been great since you've been here. Literally you've been so respectful, like being one of the best like people that I've met, blah, blah, blah. And he said, look, I'm going to let you go. We'll travel with like one less. It's fine. So um, I remember my missus, Going to my missus, I look, we're, we're moving again because obviously we're at Bristol and I went to Lincoln. I went, I we're going back down to London now. Um, just get what you can. And we'll come back and get the rest of the stuff later because I think shots were training the next day. So I remember just putting up together most of the stuff that I needed and then uh, heading back down and yeah, signing there. But different change of room. Um, a few of the lads were still there, but it just didn't click. And uh, yeah, it was, 
it's a shame because they were great characters in there. Obviously, co completely different to uh, the ones that I was there with before, but the team bond was still the same. It was still high. And even though the team was losing, boys had banter and you felt a togetherness even, even though it was a hard time. Normally, teams going through hard times tend to turn on each other or start digging people out, but it wasn't like that. We kind of stuck together and thought, look, we can get a run of games together. We'll be fine because a lot of the teams around us were losing every game as well. And we just needed, I don't know, two, three wins in a row to kind of get out of it and look up rather than down. But it was, yeah, it was a difficult time because obviously going back there, you're used to us winning every game or most games, especially at home. And I think the crowd wasn't as big as what it was when I was last there. Because obviously when a team's not doing well, you're not going to go, oh yeah, let's go watch all the shot. We're winning as many games. You know what I mean? Even if you're a loyal yeah. fan, it's a bit no, you're right. and yeah. seeing your team not winning a game, especially when after the two years of winning so many games as well, you're not thinking, oh, we're going to win this game. It's a, it was a bit, yeah, a bit, bit sad to be fair, but I knew I was going there thinking, look, let's get them out of the dirt. Let's just, let's get us up uh, and away from this relegation zone. And that was my thought process from the start. I wasn't actually fit when I signed, but I just knew that, look, I need to, to play and, do the best I can to try to help this club because the club had done so much for me initially anyway. So people do say never go back, but there was no way when the opportunity came about that I wasn't going to go back and try try help us get out of the situation. And in the end, we, we did, I guess. But um, yeah, unfortunately, obviously a team went, went out of business, so we stayed up. But yeah, we ended up staying up just, just about somehow. Thank God. Yeah, and we'll come to a little bit of that and some of those games towards the end of the season. But you did make a big impact on the marketing front when you did come back. You had the old "if it's good enough for Mensa, it's good enough for me" campaign, and yes. that sort of became a bit sort of went viral already, didn't it? it went everywhere, and uh, it became a bit of a cult thing for a while. What, what do you remember about getting involved in that? Um, uh, <laughs> you know what? I did. I didn't actually get it. Uh, I think it was the golden ticket thing, I think. And uh, I think the day I come back, I think I'd done something. I think I'd done an like, advert, like, I'll get your tickets, blah, 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 with uh, butts. And then all of a sudden, like on Twitter, things just start going up. And then there's like Alan Shearer, there's different like golfers. There's so many people coming up. I'm thinking, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> people just going, oh, if it's good enough for Menso, it's good enough for for me or something like that. I can't remember what the saying was and I just kept going I, I didn't really understand why, like what, what was happening kind of thing but <laughs> it was good exposure for the club and obviously getting money in at the time because we obviously weren't doing well at the time and had lads come and go most of the lads left on a free in the summer because I had two great years it's hard to commit to a third year and with the hope when you have certain offers on the table as well. And uh, yeah, ended up helping the club quite a lot in terms of financially and uh, publicity as well. And obviously myself as well, but I wasn't really fussed about that. But it was, yeah, it was just a bit bit of a weird time because I didn't really understand what was going on and there was a bit of buzz about it. But like I said, if it helped the club uh, financially and publicly, uh, why not, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's credit to Butts. Like I said, there's people that go behind the scenes and do so much. Yeah. But whilst I was there and even now made so much money for the club in, with little things that he does in and around here, getting sponsors in and all of that. Another one of, like you say, the unsung heroes to be able to get money in for what's to spend money on getting this player in, that player in. I think of one of one of the little projects he done, that's how I, I got in. Um, they got me back on loan to pay uh, part of my wages. So obviously like someone like Bot's doing that, if he didn't do that, I wouldn't been able to come back so like fair play to him and and everyone else who who helped behind the scenes on that no uh, absolutely I'm, I'm sure he told you he was a club record goal scorer once or twice oh don't worry i know about that we've had many conversations about that uh, across the road in the crimea mate. me and me and Buzz have had many conversations in there <laughs> he was decent he was decent he was a good player good good club man and done a terrific job without any questions so, and you need people like that within your club don't you you do 100%. need forwards 100 percent. he is um he loves the club um like you said record goal scorer but he actually does love the club and he puts his his head out on the line to be chopped off mm -hmm. if he does something wrong but he like most of the time 
it works for him. He just has this way of talking to people and getting their money into the club, and he's still doing it now. Like absolute legend, but can't, <laughs> can't follow him in any way. But I love the guy, honestly. And you, you did make an impact on, on your second return because you scored at Dagenham and Redbridge, and we were in front in that game. And just thought if we could win that game, it would have given everyone a boost. We didn't win it in the end, but you, you made a difference on your return. Yeah, scored. Um, play, I think I got in a team of the week then, but I remember I hadn't played a game in ages and I was blowing out of my backside. Uh, but yeah, it was a great, great feeling to score and come back and just run over to the fans. And at that moment, I know we ended up drawing, but at that moment you kind of thought, look, there's a bit of light here. Um, we can do this because Dagenham were a good team. And uh, yeah, getting a, even a point away from home there you're thinking, oh, we, we've, we've got a chance here. And then I think we ended up playing easily at home the next game. We ended up, I think we lost 3-1, but I scored as well to make it 1-1. And you're still thinking, look, we've got a chance here. We just need to stop conceding silly goals. And that's what it was at the time. We just conceded silly goals, little mistakes here and there. Like naivety was creeping in again from that first season where some lads maybe it was their first season in, in men's football or their first season at that level. And literally mistakes just kept costing us each game and I remember just quite a few of us going into the change rooms after the game saying we can't keep making the same mistakes but it was like a, a record player you just kept going every game can't keep making the mistakes rewind it play it again after the game can't keep making the mistakes and it, it just became a thing um, some games we'd absolutely play teams off the park not score or we'd score and again a mistake so it was quite hard because we didn't have that still um, I remember Big George Elokobi came in which did help that leadership that experience when he came in but again he's not a one man defence and there's no discredit to anyone who played in that defence but it was just mistakes throughout the team um, I remember Barrow away uh, I went for a goal and I missed and as soon as I missed I went they're going to go score now because it just sums up the way the our season was going at the time when I went back and two minutes later they scored and I remember looking over at Gary and just going like just put my hands in my head and then after the game he said oh don't worry about it like it's fine nine times out of ten you score and I said I know but as soon as I missed that one I knew they'd, they'd score it was just one of those things whereas before when I was there before I knew if we'd um, if we'd gone behind we'd score or if if I didn't score someone else would score it was one of those things where as soon as I missed, I just went, this is our season, like they'll score. And yeah, well, they scored. But yeah, a lot of mistakes cost us in games. And it wasn't like we weren't trying or we weren't we weren't playing well. We actually played well, but just couldn't get that cutting edge in both boxes, which is where most of the games are won in, in both boxes, defensing and attacking. And there was a game up at Halifax where you got an injury and it didn't look a didn't look too clever at the time, but was that was that a, quite a bad injury at the time that you got? I think I ended up being out for two weeks after that, but um, I've had knee problems. I've had two knee surgeries. I've had knee problems. And I remember I jumped and I landed weird. And I just felt pain, just literally my knee throbbing. And uh, yeah, I remember leaving on crutches thinking, oh, like, touch wood, I haven't done my knee again. Like, I was praying I didn't. And then within a week, everything settled down. So I started jogging on that and it felt all right. But I still had to get it taped up because certain movements would hurt. And I just remember saying, like, I'm not going to um, leave here, as in Aldershot, without giving it everything. So at times, I probably shouldn't have played. But I played like with that knee injury just because I really wanted to keep us up. And... Um, I didn't want to let Wads down. And at the time, he, I think he let a few players go out on loan, so we didn't have the biggest of squad squads as well. And he'd ask me, are oh, you right to play? And i say, yeah, like, play me, I'll play. Because it was just, I just wanted to give back, I guess, to the club because they'd given me so much coming out of Watford and obviously moving on to Bristol. I just wanted to give back and try help us stay up. And uh, even if it meant hurting my body, I was... Uh, I was willing to do it at that time. And so, I mean, the way you're talking there just shows how much that club, the, the club means to you. The way you're just talking there about, you know, you're sacrificing things because you're so desperate for something to work and to achieve. And, you know, you'd give everything for the cause. 
Mm-hmm. No, yeah, 100%. Um, like I said, the club's done so much for me from me coming out of the academy. I had obviously two loans at uh, Braintree, Barnet. I think I ended up going back to Braintree again as well. And then obviously to Aldershot, where I probably had the best stint of my career so far in terms of enjoying football, playing well, scoring goals, creating goals, and literally just being in such a happy and positive environment, which was created by the club and the people in it. It's, uh, the fans are part of that as well. So it was, yeah, more me trying to give back and yeah, probably shouldn't have played most of them games, but I did. And uh, I think the preseason after that, I had the same knee knee problems. Whereas I probably could have sat out the rest of the season and been fine for preseason because I went back to Bristol. But I remember just my knee flaring up constantly again and not being able to like physically walk after some training sessions. I ended up getting um injection in my knee to help uh help the tendon in it uh be a bit stronger. But yeah, it was probably not wise as a doctor, I'd probably say don't play, but I just popped a couple of pills and uh tried to do my bit for the team. Do you think that the knee injuries that you've had, you say you've had difficulties on, on, on both knees, do you think that's prevented you from maybe playing consistently at a higher level? Um, yeah and no. Because uh, I think I fully I fully recovered from both knee surgeries fine. Because they were obviously before I joined all the shots, so I looked fine when I was playing there. I guess the first 18 months I was there. Um, I think with time, it probably has got a bit worse even even now, sometimes after I ice my knees um, here at Gloucester, we play on 4G, so it's a bit heavy on the knees as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, probably, yeah, but at the end of the day, it's down to me to perform on the pitch to um, to get the opportunity to, to play at a high level and then play consistently whilst I'm there. So I, I wouldn't personally give myself any excuses as to why I haven't. It's just, I haven't. It's all on me, really. Like, I know football's a team game, but you can only con- control the controllables. You can only control what you can do. Um, I wouldn't use knee injuries as an excuse to to why I haven't played at a high level consistently. It's just just hasn't worked out, and I am where I am now. And again, I'm what 26, so fingers crossed, I can still got time to push on and uh, go the yeah. way. But yeah, I wouldn't make excuses to knee surgery. Just so many people have knee surgeries and and been okay, so. I wouldn't use that as an excuse now. 